The Dell OS Recovery Tool does not offer a download for a Dell Windows 7 Home Premium reinstallation ISO. However, as a workaround, we can download Windows 7 Professional and if we go into its sources folder, we can delete a file called the ei.cfg file. So during installation, with this file deleted, we'll get a ballot screen asking us what edition of Windows 7 we want to install. Now, you have the additional problem that the um, install.wim for the other editions of Windows 7 have not been updated. So we'll need to use this tool from Gigabyte to add the USB 3.0 drivers and storage controllers to these other editions. Okay, so once we've downloaded the tool from Gigabyte, what we need to do is extract it and then navigate to the extracted folder and launch the application. Accept the user account control prompt. So we ignore the top part where it says source and under destination, select your bootable USB and then check the three boxes to add the USB 3 drivers and the NVMe drivers to the bootable USB. So this tool will take some time to go through this. It took about 20 minutes in my case, but I've just sped up the recording significantly. Okay, so let's now just go into the sources folder of the bootable USB and we'll do a search for .wim and we'll see the install.wim and boot.wim and we'll see that they've recently been updated and we'll just compare the size of these with the originals so we'll just mount the installation ISO and we'll go into the sources folder so you see that the boot.wim and install.wim are larger which is expected because we've added additional drivers to them. So deleting the ei.cfg file and manually selecting your edition of Windows 7 breaks what we call OEM system locked pre-installation. That is the activation mechanism that's automatically applied to Dell systems when using Dell installation media. So it's essentially Windows 7 offline bias based product activation. However, this activation mechanism can easily be applied post installation and I've put together a collection of files which allow you to do this. So I've just downloaded them from my Google Drive and now they're placed on the bootable USB. The install.wim for the other editions of Windows has less updates. Most notably, you'll need to install the prerequisite updates for Internet Explorer 11 and Internet Explorer 11. Okay, so let's boot from this modified bootable USB and I'll quickly just go through the Windows installation and highlight the steps you'll need to perform in order to install Windows 7 Home Premium. So I'm going to install it in English, United Kingdom and I'm going to select install now and because we've went ahead and deleted the ei.cfg file we'll get this balance screen during installation and you'll notice that the Windows 7 Professional Edition is the only edition that's been updated to include additional Windows updates so I'm just going to go ahead and select Home Premium and now I'll get to the drive options, so I'll just delete all partitions and proceed with the installation of Windows. Okay, so once the computer restarts and the Windows installation proceeds, then we'll get the screen that asks us to input our username and computer name, and then the screen that asks us to input the password, which I'm going to skip and then we get the screen that asks us to input our product key so what we want to do is uncheck the box that says activate when online and we want to skip the product key it actually doesn't matter if you have this box checked or not so if i go to start and right click 
computer and select properties, we'll see that Windows is not activated. Now, if I had installed Windows 7 Professional, it would be activated automatically. So we can go into this cert file collection and we can look at the instructions, but because I wrote them, I know what they are. So basically what we're doing is going to the Dell folder and then Windows 7 Home Premium and copying the OEM folder to the C drive. And then we're right clicking the slp.bat and selecting run as an administrator and following the on-screen instructions. So once done, we can delete this OEM folder. And if we once again, go to start, right click computer and select properties, we see Windows is activated. Okay, so now we have the next problem, which is Internet Explorer 8, which is no longer supported by Microsoft and may have difficulties even accessing the Microsoft website. So what we're going to do is first install the prerequisite update for the convenience rollup, which is called the servicing stack, KB302069. And once we've installed this, we need to restart. Now the next thing we want to do is install the convenience rollup. And the convenience rollup is KB3125574 and is essentially Windows 7 Service Pack 2 in all but name. So once this is done, we'll need to restart. And this update will take a long time to install because it is essentially Windows 7 Service Pack 2. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft did not include Internet Explorer 11 in this convenience rollup. And doubly, unfortunately, they did not include all the prerequisite updates required for Internet Explorer 11 in the Internet Explorer 11 offline installer. So basically, we need to go ahead and install KB2639308, KB2670838, KB2729094, and KB2834140. I didn't actually need this IE11 spellings that I had in the folder, so you can just ignore that. So basically, I'm going ahead and installing these updates one by one and then restarting the computer. Okay, so now that these standalone updates are finally installed, I can go ahead and run the supposedly offline Internet Explorer 11 installer, accept the user account control, and then select install. Now it says downloading required updates, but I've already installed these. So I'll eventually skip this and it'll ask me to close down Explorer and I'll select continue and then Internet Explorer 11 will be installed. After the convenient rollup, Microsoft decided to release their security updates as monthly security rollups and you only need the latest monthly security rollup. So in my case it's KB4457144 but assuming you watch this video sometime later, you'll likely have a newer security rollup. You can cross-reference the other tutorial video I made, which was downloading the Windows 7 Professional, reinstallation of ISO and making the bootable USB, where I discussed the monthly security rollup. So after the monthly security rollup, what we can do is go ahead and install Microsoft.NET Framework. So you can accept the user account control and then you'll need to accept the license agreement and then select install. And that's your base Windows 7 installation. Obviously what you'll need to do next is install your system drivers, starting with Dell system software if present and then the chipset drivers. You may also want to install Microsoft Security Essentials and its latest definition before going online 